Hi, I'm Bill Patton with 720 Degree Coaching, and it's my it's exciting for me to have Vlad Damien on the show, and he and I have been long time connected on Facebook, but we haven't really spoken in depth about anything. But one thing I do know, he and I are very like-minded about a lot of things, and so it's exciting to kind of dig into that. So we're going to get to know Vlad, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, his history, philosophy, and you know, where is he and what's he doing? But we're going to lead off with that. So, Vlad, how are you doing today? Bill, thank you so much for uh, inviting me. It's a pleasure to, to, to be here with you. Um, I'm, I'm very excited, you know, chatting a little bit. Um, I uh, live in New Jersey. I'm right at the border between New Jersey and um, New York. Um, uh, I live in Bergen County, which is like 15, 20 minutes away from um, Manhattan. And I teach in a uh, Bergen and uh, Brooklyn County for the last 20 years since I came to us. That's awesome. And then is that a, what's, what's your facility or do you have a couple of different places where you do? I have a couple of different places for, for the last 19 years, I um, worked at a country club for the summer, um, Paramount country club, which is in Rockland County. Um, and then since we have two seasons indoor and outdoor and um, for the indoor, I worked at the West Rock tennis club. Um, which is in Rockland County as well, and um, Lifeplex Indoor Tennis Club, which is a, which is a gym and uh, gym and tennis. So I'm I'm between um, between these uh, these three places, and then also seeing you know some of my juniors on the side at the public public courts, and so kind of like uh, trying to drift from one place to another. Okay, awesome. And then you are where did you grow up, and how did you get into tennis? I uh, I grew up in um, Eastern Europe and Romania, um, literally in the middle of uh, Transylvania. Cluj-Napoca is a, a town of 400,000 people. Um, my dad um, is a tennis coach, um, retired, but he's still doing a little bit of consulting at times. He's, he's, he's back, in, back in Romania. So he taught me tennis. And um, very hard to be a parent and a coach. That's a... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, difficult task and um, I started playing around maybe five six years old uh, played juniors I was um, ranked top 10 12 14 16 in uh, Romania um, I had um, how I mentioned you know on a bio that I sent you I had a um, pleasure of like um, working a little bit with uh, Ilya Stasi for a while um, crazy guy Crazy. Yeah, no, I, I loved him. I thought he was really fu a funny guy, really very, very entertaining, very, very charismatic, a um, good heart. For kind of crude. All right. So, all right. So, let's talk about Dracula for a moment. Count Dracula, you know, Vlad the Impaler. So, you, I think it's an important message because because we Americans are so fascinated. So, for you, sure, you know, it, yeah. it is like it's so much so much bigger here than there. It's like Oh, Vlad Dracula, Transylvania. Oh, wow. Tell me a story. And I'm like, I have no stories. My wife was like, Vlad Dracula, she's American. She's born here in like New York. Said, oh, Transylvania. I'm like, I have no stories. So, so, we so there that. you have it. That's yeah, the reality. Count Dracula, so what? All right. So we I just know. had to get that out because, you know, so if you're thinking that way, just knock it off. It's not that big of a deal. All right. So then, so you, in your junior career, then you went on and then there was a problem and then how, I, how did I, that keep going? I, I played um, competitive um, tournaments until I was like 17 that I had a, a knee injury, um, broke my ICL um, ligament, and had surgery and never recovered the way I should have. And, um, you know, it was tough once I got back after like seven, eight months to start playing. And... Um, I um, got into coaching, so I left Romania, taught tennis in Italy um, for about a year. I was like really young, 18 years old, um, moved to England for a while, um, played some club tennis there, and then um, taught tennis there for, for, for almost a year, and then um, came to U.S. on a um, student visa for three months, and uh, really loved it. Start working at the country. I had a job offer at the country club where I'm currently working. And um, here I am, 20 years later. All right. 
So let's dig into your, so you, you started coaching and then who were your early influences on your coaching and what were some of the lessons that you picked up from that? It's a, it's a very good question. Um, I had like a funky relationship with my father, you know, which was my coach and stuff. So um, we disagree, you know, on, on, on a lot of things. So I didn't really like follow that path, so to speak. Um, you know, I start um, pretty much um, stealing, stealing from other coaches, right? Because that, that, that's how you learn. And um, um, I, you know, over, over the years, you know, I just tried, you know, to see what works, what doesn't work. Um, I start reading, I agree with some things, I disagree with some things and kind of like made my own idea of um, 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 coaching. And then, then, then through the years, you know, I uh, um, followed a little bit and I had um, um, about 10 years ago when I also met my wife, I, I had an um, opportunity, you know, to, to talk tennis with um, Marvin Dent. I don't know if um, Marvin Dent is a very, very close friend. Um, of ours, you know, doing dinners together and so on and so forth. Um, I met my, my mother-in-law, um, Betty Ann Liguori. She's the coach at Fordham University on the women's side. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tennis family and we constantly spin ideas. And, uh, you know, sometimes after a few drinks, we have fights about... Um, yeah. So here's, a, here's a funny connection. Here's a funny connection. So I hired a tennis pro out here in NorCal and... Uh, when I was asking him his influences, he was coached by Marvin Dent. Holy cow. So, so, um, so yeah, Issa Cohen um, What's worked his with name? Issa Cohen. With, and I think he met him in Massachusetts. So, um, so anyway, so, yeah, Marvin, Marvin Dent is really an amazing coach. And I think he's somebody who doesn't get a lot of, uh, recognition. He doesn't get a lot of exposure no, for the being guy, a guy, great, great the guy coach. Is amazing. It's like Bill. Whenever I talk with him, you know, I realize how little I know. Okay, so tell us one like kind of surprising bit of knowledge that you got from Marvin. Hmm. Um, maybe that technique at times is overrated. Maybe that technique at times is overrated. React, don't think. Mm, yeah, He's no, that, that's laugh. huge. He that's huge. Works. And I, yeah, I, I want to dig into that a little bit because I think, I think what I'm seeing with the very best coaches um, is that there's a pretty large group of very good coaches who are saying the same thing, and then. Um, but there is, there's a very large group of people who really overemphasize technique to the detriment of the player. They don't actually, they might have the prettiest strokes, but they don't know how to win the match. Not them win your matches. So, all right. So, that, so that's really a great one. Um, anything else comes to mind from Marvin that, that helped you a lot? Passion and drive. Passion and drive. You know, it's like uh, I have a mixed um, um, people, you know, that I'm working. Some are adults, some are juniors, some they can really, really play. Some they play college currently. Some they suck. They are beginners. And, and I have a lot of fun, you know, um, working with, with, with all of them. But going more towards the, the better players, like which are playing tournaments and they're trying to maybe get a scholarship and stuff. Um, I believe that passion is, 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 is a factor, you know, and it's um, unfortunately, you know, um, often, you know, the coach has more, um, drive and passion than the student. So, um, the, the, the student, you know, who goes out of his own way, you know, to do the extra, the student who goes on his own, you know, to serve, few baskets after the lesson is done the student you know who takes two extra laps um in my opinion that's the one who who, who will, will 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 go the extra mile with his tennis career Wh whatever that means you know college or high school or um 
And, um, you know, it's a shame. Sometimes you just have, you know, kids which are very, very talented and they just, the parents probably wanted more than them. Yeah. Well, I think sometimes we get discouraged about that, but I think we don't give ourselves enough credit for being a part of the student's process. You know, I, there's this thing that keep, people keep saying, you become like the top five people you spend the most time with. So, Tony so you, is it, okay, I didn't even know where that came from. So I'm not a, I'm, I'm, I probably am a peripheral Tony Robbins fan, but I don't even know it. I've, <laughs> I've listened to his stuff and I've heard a lot of other things, but um, uh, yeah, so you, you spend this time with people. So when, even though we might have all this passion that they don't have yet, you know, there's, we can see this transformation happening. And, and also, then, let me throw one more thing in there too. Sometimes our passion creates a filter where people who actually have no desire to become a real tennis player go away because, because that passion is sort of repulsive to them. So that's a good thing because then it saves us time and energy and we can go towards the people that actually have the passion. So uh, I, you know, I look at it as a whole continuum. A win-win situation. Yeah, it is. And, you know, there's because people talk about the law of attraction, but then the opposite of that is the law of repulsion. So, you know, it's, I, I look at both of those because people who are aligned with, with what they want in life and the energy to go towards it seem to come together nicely. So, all right. So let's get into your, your specific coaching philosophy. What's sort of unique about you compared to the, you know, the everyday tennis coach? You know, it's like, I'm trying always, you know, to kind of like, you know, think ahead. Every, everyone's different. I, I don't have like a one way, one way of teaching. I'm trying to kind of like figure out, figure out things as I go. Um, However, you know, at the same time, you know, if I have juniors who are like playing tournament, I'm trying, you know, to, to develop their game, you know, in, in the future. Um, um, I, I recently have a kid that I start working with, you know, who has extraordinary timing, but is uh, slow. So we're working, for example, with him, you know, just to have an aggressive game. Can't play defense, you know, he's going to, if he's slow. Um, stuff like this, you know, a little you know, serve in volley, you know, for the better servers and the ones who have better throwing motion. Um, and kind of like, you know, try to, you know, think ahead and see pros and cons and, you know, um, and, you know, hope that I uh, get it right. You know, I I'm at the phase, you know, where I, I see how the games of kids develop over seven, eight, 10 years and so on and so forth. Yeah, uh, no, and this, so is, this is great. So here, here's what I'm hearing is that you've got, you know, you have an idea of what they're going to need to do because of the, the skills that they have or the skills that, or what they don't have. You know, one of, one, of my least, one of my least favorite expressions is you can't teach speed because I think people can become faster with training. But there's sort of a finite amount of speed you can teach. So, you know, I mean, if someone just has that fast twitch muscle, what are you going to do? So, I mean, or they don't. So I agree with you because I mean, here's the funny thing is I see uh, coaches who teach sort of a cookie cutter approach, but not that funny. slow kid can't play that way. Right. Or the kid who's extremely fast needs to play a different way or the one that has lots of power or doesn't have any power or has a mind that it loves trickery. You know, these, all these people need to play differently. And so that it looks like that's what you're doing with your play. Well, you know, it's, um, you know, looking back, you know, often I'm thinking, oh boy, I wish I would have done something different. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to get it right all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, and that brings up another thing. I mean, so great coaches. So to me, that is an earmark of a great coach because you have the ability to reflect, right? I mean, we, one of my, well, another phrase I like is who I am hates who I've been. So who I am hates who I've been, right. I mean, cause right. looking backwards, you can always see something that you should have done, right? So boy, I wish yeah. I would have done it 
differently. Right. I, wish I would have, um, you know, maybe work more on, I don't know, that backhand side because it's so weak and not just focus on the forehand side. You know, it, it's yeah. really... It's really difficult. Uh, I, I remember, I think, um, uh, Borg's coach, you know, said that if I would have focused on, I don't know, was, he would have never, been, on, he, if I would have been focused on his weaknesses, he would have never been the player that he mm, was. Interesting. So, you know, there's always, I'm always trying to find the balance, you know, and, you know, and, and I hope I'll, I'll, I'll get it more often right than wrong. Yeah, well, that's admirable, and I think that that, that is instructive to younger pros. Uh, and, you know, one thing I've always tried to do is find older coaches who've, who've, been, who've been through the wars for many years, but who are also current. They're up on what's happening now, because if they have both, then I, I want to hear from them, because... Because then, then I can read that note from my future self, you For know, sure. and avoid avoid some problems. So, yeah, the seeking of wisdom among those coaches who are now in their sixties, seventies, and eighties, if they're still coherent, it's uh, it's amazing stuff you can get. You know I, I almost, you know, I always felt, you know, that if you go to somebody, you know, who's a little bit older, they just they've seen a lot more over the years and you know you, you hope that they you know study the game um whatever that means um you know they stay current with reading and seeing people playing and um going to tournaments and and, and not not just like staying and working with this you know players and, and and feeding balls because it's totally different once you see somebody you know play, playing under pressure than somebody who's like a just playing for fun or working on some particular stuff. Awesome. So now if somebody came to you, if, if a brand new beginner came to you and they were, you know, cause, cause see right now what we're going into the advertising part of the talk. Mm -hmm. So Which a I'm brand sorry. new beginner <laughs> comes to you for the first time. What's, what are the first moments on the court going to look like with Vlad? Well, I'll definitely, you know, try to, 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 make it fun, introduce myself. I was about to say, give him a high five, but not nowadays. Um, not so fast, mister. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, maybe, maybe go, go over a few, you know, just simple questions, you know, if he's playing any, any, any other sports, you know, if he, you know, played tennis before. Um, and then maybe just, you know, um, work on a few basic skills with him, you know, just so I get an idea how athletic it is throwing, catching, maybe carrying the ball, do some ups, do some downs, hmm. um, roll the ball on the strings a little bit. Um, and then, then, then I can go from there, you know, to maybe like stop drop feeding some balls. Um, just, you know, to try to, to, to get an idea, you know, how, how um, um, athletic he is. And, and then I'll take it from there. And number one, you know, I just want to make it fun because if it's, a, if it's not fun, it's not going to come back and it's not going to help anybody. It's not going to help me. It's not going to help them. It's not going to help the parents. And it's not going to help the tennis industry. Right. So what are your thoughts on attempting to have a rally in the first lesson? Um, I think depends again on the skill of the kid. Mm -hmm. Because in my opinion, you know, if, 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 if I'm attending, you know, to have a rally with somebody who can make contact, you know, I skip the steps. Mm. If the kid is somewhere athletic, you know, and he can, you know, catch the ball and so on and so forth, I will try to, um, I, I do, I like to do progressions. So, but in other words, you know, if he was able to catch, carry the ball, you know, maybe I'll toss, I'll drop feed few and then I'll have him on the other side of the net, um, send few um, balls to him, see if he can connect. And if, you know, he passed those uh, stages, then I can, I can, um, um, talk about rallying a little bit, you know, and try to try, try to make it happen. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely not against it as, as long as, as long as the kid, you know, um, is able to, you know, make contact. Um, because again, if I'll move him on the other side and try to rally with him and he can't make contact with the ball, it's going to look at me like I have two heads. He's going to look at the parents like, what is going on here? And he's not going to come back. No, for sure. And that, and that's awesome. So, you know, and that, that brings out another thing is that great coaches, do progression and regression. You know, if they can't, there's something they can't do, 
then I'll, obviously I'll you have to back that. up and and develop that skill to but move forward. I yeah. also I also feel like if you if you if you do this long enough, you'll you'll get an idea who can do it and who cannot do it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If, if one kid cannot catch the ball or like carry the ball in his racket, I have hard times believing that he's going to go on the other side of the net and start going back and forth. But I could be wrong. I saw crazier things than that. So. <laughs> All right. So what are some things that you look for? What are some of the activities that you create so that the players can succeed in the first lesson? I'm also using a crazy ball. I don't know. Zigzag mm -hmm. ball, you know, yeah. um, because, you know, kids and also same thing, you know, I feel like that, that, that helps them a little bit with um, eye hand coordination. Um, if I have group, um, lessons you know when beginnerish and so on and so forth i'm trying to uh, incorporate a little bit of soccer as well mm. um because I, I i feel like it's is really important you know for them same thing you know to 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 play other sports and just to develop the coordination um with legs as well which is right so 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 important in um in, in tennis as well um throwing catching pretty much um tag sometimes you know i'm trying to do that more on clay than on hardcore you know because i don't want them you know to you know some are not as athletic you don't want them to injure themselves and so on and so forth yeah yeah no that's nice and yeah i mean i from uh, the other thing too is that is that there's a lot of receiving skills in there people a lot of times people say oh you know we need more clay courts because you know so many people on top 100 you know played on clay blah 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 but what they forget is that actually um, almost all of them played soccer. And so, so there was a lot of footwork and receiving well, skills that you, came you, from if that. You, if you think about it, Bill, that's what I, another thing I learned from Marvin Dan, which I never knew, supposedly, I didn't fact check on that. Uh, okay. But, you know, open stands in tennis came from Spanish soccer. Okay. So, I don't know, but... However, you know, I feel like, you know, sports in general, you know, at other sports, you know, how I mentioned to you, throwing, catching, soccer, tag, change of direction, you know, I feel like those are really important um, at any age, but especially at an early age and stuff, because that will translate into the whole development later on. Absolutely. And it also points to, you know, how it's important to have different sports skills to translate into tennis. And then also a variety of activities so that we're not doing, um, you know, getting, giving them chronic injuries from repetitive stress of oh, sure. doing the same thing. You know, I actually, you know, because I mentioned earlier, you know, that I had a different philosophy you know, that my, my, my father had with me and so on and so forth. But um, I, I think the times, you know, and I, maybe I'm wrong again, I'm not saying, but this is just what I believe is that quality over quantity. So with another words, I don't think you need even as a junior, you know, to, to, to play six hours a day, you know, to, 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 to be able to make it, whatever that means, you know, I'm not even talking about pro or college, whatever to, to, to get you better. Um, because I think you'll just get injured and you need to play other sports to have the right alignment. All right. Awesome. So now, um, so we're kind of heading into the, into the wrap up phase here. So what are a couple of takeaways that people, that you'd like to pe people to have from this talk so that they will know that they can come see you and, and take some tennis lessons and have a lot of fun? Well, I think, you know, um, they should take that tennis is, uh, fun at every level um job of the coach is you know to um be able to um, um coach any level and to be able to adapt depending what you have on the other side of the net um you don't coach uh, pete sampras and rafa nadal the same um different styles so it's, it's, it's the same thing you know teaching um um female adult and you know who can play and somebody who's uh, just started playing tennis and somebody who's uh, uh, working to play college tennis and so on and so forth. You know, in my opinion, you know, the job of the coach is to be able to adapt depending 
um, we will have on the other side of the net. It's not a cookie cutter. You're not going to teach everyone the same. No, that is really great. Okay, so now how can people reach you? Facebook. Um, okay, fine. Okay, so it's Vlad, V-L-A-D, Damien, D-A-M-I-A-N. Awesome. All right. Hey, you know what? It was great to get to know you here, sir. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you out there in Facebook land. And um, Bill, thank any, you. Any final words? Yeah. You're thank welcome. you. Thank you so much for um, um, having me. Um, this is amazing. It was a, was a, was a pleasure um, to uh, be here chatting with you. Um, I hope I'll be able to um, do it again. I'm very looking forward because I think uh, you're, um, you're, you're a great mind. Um, um, Thank you. Always, I'm always looking to, to learn. I'm looking to, um, you know, um, um, be around people who been in the trenches for 20, 30, 40 years because how I mentioned to you earlier, you know, they've seen a lot more than I've seen, you know, um, I'm doing this for 20 years. Um, and um, that's about it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Very good. Thanks for your time. And then if you're watching this, uh, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you are a coach and would like to have an interview like this, then just reach out to me and we'll make it happen. All right. Thank you, Vlad. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. You too. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye.